In this tutorial, we're going to discuss how to get the proper phase of the reflection coefficient when the boundary is not at x equals 0, but at some arbitrary plane x equals d. We've already studied the problem of the Fresnel reflection coefficient a lot, and we know that the reflection coefficient at x equals 0, which I'll write rs sub 0, is equal to this fairly simple expression, kx minus qx over kx plus qx. There is a phase term here, an e to the i theta sort of term, and we're about to remind ourselves what this is. This is something that was encountered implicitly when you solved situations with two boundaries at x equals 0 and x equals d, but I want to just remind everybody of what this is when a boundary is at x equals d. So there's going to be two boundary equations for this standard problem where we've got a k vector coming in, a k prime vector reflected, and a q vector in the second medium. And that first boundary equation is going to look like this, 1 e to the i kx d plus the reflected field. So this is the sum of the electric fields on the left and they're equal to the sum of the electric fields on the right, which is the only one of the transmitted beam. And this would have been the standard way that we would write that. And I'm just going to define, for simplicity, this whole right-hand side, including the phase term, to be a related variable TS tilde, which we're not even going to need in this problem explicitly to calculate. Now let me remind you that on the left hand side this comes from writing the full expression of e to the i k dot r minus omega t but the ky terms we've already said are the same on the left and the right ky y equals k prime y y which equals q y y so to the y terms drop out the time terms drop out and this is the only stuff that's left familiar stuff the second line is going to be the continuity of the slope across the boundary, and so we, when we take derivatives of the fields, we get an expression which should also look familiar, which looks like this. Kx times Kx being from the derivative, and because there's a minus Kx here, we get a minus sign when we write the second term, and the derivative of this term is going to bring down a Qx, and then instead of writing this all over, I'm going to compactly write this as ts tilde. And ts tilde I can now substitute in from the top line. So I'll use this expression here. And so this is equal to qx times copying that over. Now what we can do is we can multiply everything in this line by e to the minus i kx d so that these terms will become ones and this term will become e to the minus 2i kx d so let's just rewrite that equation again and we will get the following and if I now associate this expression here which is the reflection coefficient at location d, we're just calling that rs in this problem, and then times this exponential here. Let's just for the moment call that rs prime. This is the same term here, rs prime. And when we do that, this looks exactly like the expression we solved at x equals 0. kx times 1 minus rs equals qx times 1 plus rs. It's just that the rs role is being played by rs prime. So we can now hijack our previous solution of this problem and say that this reflection coefficient rs prime, that's just equal to our solution that we've seen before. kx, the same expression we're going to get up here, that leading term, kx minus qx over kx plus qx. And to be explicit, I would say that that equals rs at location 0.
So now if we want to figure out what the reflection coefficient is at d, we just substitute in here and we get that rs at d, this is rs at d, that's going to be equal to what rs at 0 is. times the this factor brought on to the right hand side e to the plus 2i kx d. Now this 2i times kx d looks very reminiscent of a term that comes up when you solve two layer problems because one of those boundaries can't be at x equals zero. And it comes up not because any physics is different at this second boundary but just because we've set a choice of x equals zero, which is the place where these exponential terms will intrinsically oscillate in phase. Here we only have one interface for this problem, but it emphasizes the fact that the reflection coefficient does have a different phase associated with it, depending upon where that boundary is, which is just mathematical bookkeeping, but is crucial for understanding the way that the phase of this reflected beam is going to be compared with other beams in the problem. So we can now see that when we wrote at the beginning that the reflection coefficient that we've always been talking about at a plane x equals zero isn't just this term, but formally it's this term times an exponential, and that extra phase term is this. At x equals zero, of course, we, this term just becomes 1, and so we get our familiar result that rs just equals kx minus qx over kx plus qx. But in general, when x equals d, you have to use this full expression if you want to keep track of the phase of the reflected beam relative to some other, something else in the problem. And that is exactly what we're going to do in the next tutorial.